Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now as a kid I had a netbook or notebook or whatever you want to call it and I have nothing but bad memories. It was slow from day one and took ages to do anything. Today I wanted to see what the absolute cheapest end of the modern laptop market is like and to do that I bought this. The Lenovo 110S, the cheapest laptop I could find that wasn't a Chromebook. Now I'll admit you may be able to find something cheaper on the unbranded or Chinese market, but I wanted to test the cheapest thing I could find that could be picked up at most stores for the least money, and this was that laptop. At just £129.99 here in the UK, it seems like a steal, but is it any good? Well, let's find out. I've opted for this dashing red option which colours the entirety of the all plastic exterior and in hindsight is a little bit too much. This thing is very light, weighing in at just over £2 and is very sleek, being barely wider than the ports on each side. Speaking of which, you get two USB 2 slots on the right and one headphone jack and a card reader HDMI port and USB 3 port on the left. Opening it up and you're greeted with a 1366 by 768 11.6 inch display that looks a little washed out colour wise but it seems sharp enough considering the size of the screen. So what specs do we get for our money? Well this beast features a dual core N3060 Celeron 1.6GHz dual core processor, 2 gigs of DDR3 which is upgradable to 4, as well as 32GB of eMMC storage which is almost entirely used up out of the box. Having said that, there is surprisingly little manufacturer installed bloatware with all but a few apps. The Cortana voice setup and totally pointless inclusion of Candy Crush bothers me more, so I've put it off as long as I can, but before before I show you what it's like to use, let me show you the crispiness and pure Hollywood quality of the built-in 360p camera, as I can't fit this bit in anywhere else. It's not very good, and I don't think the sound's that great either. Sublime. Most of your time with this laptop will likely consist of basic web browsing, which this thing handles quite well. After being told how great and fast Microsoft Edge is, you're free to go and download Chrome and begin exploring the World Wide Web. Using this is immediately better than I thought. Some web pages will seem a little slower to load, but once done, navigating them will be rather pleasant. You just get a no frills but fine user experience, which is all I can really ask for at this price point. The keyboard feels quite nice to use with decent spacing on the keys and my only issue was the tiny enter button which meant I hit almost everything else around it before actually submitting my web search. I'd also recommend plugging in an external mouse if you can because the touchpad isn't always 100% responsive, not a major gripe, just an observation. Returning to general usage and even video playback is flawless at 1080p 60fps. I had a problem where I set the resolution to full HD and the video playback on YouTube briefly froze even after buffering but after that slight hitch all was well even if 1080p is wasted on this screen. So it turns out this thing is actually alright for a daily device and for basic tasks and would suit someone who just browses the web, watches a lot of YouTube or Netflix and perhaps needs something for school or work. To add to that you'll be able to do all of those things for anywhere between 4 and 7 hours on a single charge. But what about gaming I hear none of you ask and so you shouldn't be because you'd have a higher chance of running crisis on an actual potato than you would on this thing. Okay, it's not that bad. I did get Morrowind running at 480p with pretty reduced quality settings, but even older games will struggle on the integrated HD graphics. Out of curiosity, I hooked up my external hard drive to test out a couple of newer but not very intensive titles, and while I'm surprised they actually ran, they really weren't very playable at all. This got me thinking about the raw power of the laptop. Just how does the Celeron N3060 fit into the world of Intel CPUs? To test that I ran Cinebench. The multi-core test came back with a result of 63, and after a little bit of research it seems similar scores were achievable with a heavily overclocked Pentium 4. If you're looking for a cheap laptop then even an old refurbished eBay offering would probably offer more power, but if you or someone you know wants a brand new super budget and everyday option then this really isn't all that bad. It's faster to use than I thought it would be and it's super portable thanks to its lightweight and slim form factor. Just don't expect too much of it and don't make any important Skype calls. Guys, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, budget laptop review. Um, if you did, leave a like on it down below. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.